there is still so much they could do. Yeah, there really is. There will be a level of comfortability now having secured a playoff spot even before their matchup against Houston Dynamo. I do think they were a little bit flat coming out in that match and maybe knowing that they clinched a spot in the playoffs aided in that. But for Nashville SC, look at this. Look at the numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven players in the box pressing right now in the half. You want to play total football against seven and a half? Every player from Nashville SC is actually on this side of the halfway line. This buildup from Sporting Kansas City. This entry pass to the right foot of Gutierrez so he can decide where he wants to go. Well, it's closed down well from Orozco, so Kenda goes out wide, and this is much better. Decisive from Kenda, he's going to whip it around. Tommy throws the bicycle kick at it, so Mozo has to pinch over, and he's waiting to react to see what's going to happen. And this falls sweetly to Johnny Russell. Catch that as cleanly as you can. Whatever you paid for your mission, that goal was worth it right there. Arena started the whole thing, and then he has the presence of mind to just reach, put it into the path to Corey Baird, and then just like Gotti Kinga did for Polito's goal, Baird goes around the corner with a back heel through the legs, and Arena is just so smart to play it across to alley -oop. That is as good of a goal as you will see anywhere in world football. Class personified, a game-changing goal right before half. Half the team was celebrating before Aliou even put it in for the first time in his Major League Soccer career. That is the 2023 version of Houston Dynamo playing football as opposed to the team that we've seen struggle in front of goal over years past. He's a player that's really coming into his own right now. He's got a wealth of experience, but at 30 years old, in goalkeeper terms, he's now just starting to hit his prime, and he was phenomenal the last time these two teams played. If Salt Lake want to come in here and get a result tonight, they're going to need a replicated performance from Zach McMath that he gave at Rio Tinto Stadium in the middle of March. Yeah. Awesomeness that surrounds Megan Rapino Scored two goals. They won. Now, this is the big matchup. The next round, they will play against the host country, France. So That's this, the big is, one. this is the big one. This is a matchup that is worthy of a World Cup final, yet because of the way it works out with whoever won in the group stages, they will play in the quarterfinal. Lucho Acosta finds this space in behind Gutierrez, so he's always chasing. And it's a wonderful challenge from Gutierrez, but it's going to go right to Bupenta. And this is decisive from Vasquez. He does a good job of sidestepping. And all the confidence in the world from the U.S. men's national team striker to wrap his foot around it. It's a fantastic strike. This buildup is all about the spacing and the entry pass gets picked off, but it's the second ball recovery and Acosta getting just behind the midfield three. And much like Brandon Vasquez did against Andreo Fontas in the first match, he stepped for step in the box and then he just stops. And he lets the center back run out of position. He adjusts his feet well. Barrial picks his head up at the last moment, cuts it back to the top of the six. And Vasquez understands it's not about applying any extra power to the finish. It's about getting the trajectory right and getting his angles on, spot on. And he's done it clinically. 2-0, eight minutes in. Yes, it does affect Porterda, but not enough for a referee's liking. And that's a lifeline for Charlotte. Here's another one. Miram sneaks in and scores. Marrera let it go. It was played back to him, and Miram sneaks in and scores, and all of a sudden, it's a brand new game in Columbus in the span of a minute. Those two can't believe it. Miram can't believe his luck, and Lower.com Field can't believe that it's 3-2. to two. In the blink of an eye, a mistake from Edmondson. Herrera thinks it's going to Schulte. Schulte thinks Herrera's in position. And then Justin Miram takes the chance and he puts himself in the position to be able to capitalize on the mistake. What a turn of events here in Columbus. Just like that, it's three to two. I mean, just a, a mind-numbing turn of events. And here we go at the other end. Archon with a beat on it. Max Archon to the left foot. Ramirez, it's in! Oh, the answer by Columbus. Ramirez with another uppercut. His second goal, 4-2 crew. This game 
Are you kidding me? Three goals in the last three minutes on this one. Backbreaking for Charlotte. Arson collects himself, cuts it back, watches his dummy from Cucho. And then Ramirez, the trust between Cucho to listen to his teammate Ramirez to call him off. And then Ramirez just puts his foot through it. Kalina's there, but there's just so much venom on this strike. But he can't react and get down in time. Everyone's trying to figure out what just happened a moment ago to make it 3-2. And by the time they can figure it out, it's 4-2. Are you not entertained?